three part whatever. Um, all right, so that's one, the, the hernia scars. The second one is my, uh, my most, most recent in quotes, um, because the last time, the last time I saw a doctor, um, of any kind was 2018. Um, I worked for a little while in way too close proximity to the medical school. And I have other videos about that, um, about being terminated. So there's that. Oh, and this one I only have six minutes to record. That's cool. So I must be running out of space again. Um, so the good old boy doctor who told me I had a perfect vagina at the conclusion of an exam when I was in my 30s um, and told me that in 30 years of being a doctor, no one had ever asked to see their ultrasound are only a small sliver of the reasons that news of medical communities experiment, the medical community experimenting on military families and sterilizing the unwitting poor has broadened that mistrust to include physical health care. So no, I am not interested in participating in any mental health or physical health services. I have not actively sought mental health care since May 2018 or physical health care beyond over-the-counter purchases at a pharmacy since January of the same year. I hope that if I do not kill myself first, I die of something that is preventable and treatable, but that is not communicable because I don't want to spread it. I don't like to spread. I like to share ideas and pleasurable experiences. I like to share ideas and pleasurable experiences. All right, so I've got um, a lot of reading. I'm going to try to speed read through the rest of this and not add commentary because I do I don't want to just throw the rest in the comment um, so we won't talk today about the creeptastic misguidance from my assigned high school guidance counselor and how that affected my development when I finally did seek mental health services for myself it was to determine whether and how to end the toxic marriage I rushed into in 2002 uh, 2003 in order to save a friend from oppressive parental decisions and lack of access to university financial aid due to their income level, or so I thought. Um, and we divorced uh, in 2009. Um, but this is not that story either. I support physician-assisted suicide, and I'm glad suicide prevention organizations exist for the supposedly 80% of people who survive a suicide attempt and are glad to have survived. So they may disgust me, but I am glad they exist. That's a weird paradox. Um, I am in the 20% of people uh, because 30 plus years later, I am still not, not glad. I am still devastated. I survived my first suicide attempt. The closest I get um, to being able to say a statement like, I'm glad I'm alive, is since I haven't killed myself yet, I'm glad to be experiencing this. That quality of life, quality of life matters. Black lives matter, quality of life matters. Um, okay, and because I've made so many decisions that have caused harm, whether direct or indirect, whether intentional or unintentional, since that first suicide attempt, those moments are rare. And the rage and despair and anguish often creep back in before I can muster the energy to share with people involved that and in what ways I appreciated an experience. Um, the statistics are from a presentation I attended at, uh, by a guy from Johns Hopkins who was seeking, seeking research collaborators. So no, there, there was sure not an extra layer of creep there. Ooh. Um, I also learned during that presentation that no one has published an annotated bibliography on suicide research basically since Dr. Kevorkian was convicted. Um, and I, I support his mission, but not his method, because I do remember reading that he um, 
that he practiced on prisoners and I have a problem with that. Get volunteers. If you can't get a volunteer for your project, that's a problem. Um, not that the researcher himself framed it that way. He didn't mention Kevorkian at all. And he did not effectively address in his presentation the 20% category of people like me. 20% is not insignificant. That's a fifth. A whole fifth of people who fail to kill themselves still do not want to live. We should not be coerced through recovery. I don't like to interact much with people at all anymore because I'm tired of fighting, I'm tired of inequity, and I'm tired of my lack of geosocial mobility. I love to travel. I miss traveling so much, but it would be irresponsible of me to travel. I especially don't like to interact with people who live in my neighborhood. The version of me that they seemed to like best was the bizarre Susie homemaker play I put on when coerced by the white supremacist mother of the friend who I hoped would become my non-exclusive life, par life partner who I mortgaged a house with. Uh, she nailed a birdhouse to the wooden fence of the least invasive neighbor I've met